Hello guys, got a video here for you today on the Dream Deck. Now before we start, I just want to say sorry for no videos last week. I'm building myself a CNC mill and I just needed a few nights to sort of get a few of the big jobs out of the way. But we should be back to videos as normal and today we're going to be shortening the stroke on the Dream Tack. What do I mean by this? Well, quite simply, we're going to be cutting the cocking lever down so that there's less movement to cock the rifle back. At the moment it goes all the way back to here, but as I'm going to chop the lever off, probably about 10 or 12 mil back from the end here, so that we've got a shorter cocking throw. And that will just make it easier to do with one hand on the rifle. Right then, let's get started. So, to get the cocking arm out, what we have to do is disassemble most of the rifle. Luckily with the Dream Tax it's quite simple, and you've already really seen me do it properly once, so I'll just speed through it this time. So I'm just going to take the barrel out first. That's so with a 3mm Allen key and the two front screws there. Next, I'll go ahead and take the butt pad off. That's done with a 2.5mm Allen key in here. Only need to loosen it, and then we can unscrew the whole butt piece. Once that's off, we can take the grip off, and that's done with a 4mm Allen key. Then remove this bottom plate. So that's a 3mm Allen key in the bottom. and 4mm in these two screw holes here. Once that's off, we'll take the top piece off, and that's with a 4mm Allen key in these two screw holes here, and then two, two and a half at the back. And then once the top and bottom off, we can just take out these two screws here with a 3mm Allen key. Then the whole back can be just lifted out. There it is there. So we'll take out the cocking shuttle and we'll tip out the hammer spring. Set them to one side. While we're here, I will mention that this is one of my ones with the Delrin end to stop it wearing in the block. And I've just made a couple extras of these and I'll be sticking them on eBay within the next few days. What happens with the original part is the end here is made out of aluminium and as the hammer gets cocked back, it hits the aluminium and wears it. If you take your Dream Tack apart and there's a lot of metal shavings in the trigger assembly and where the hammer goes, that's the cause of it there. So what I do is I just remake this back part and press in a Delrin sleeve. So the hammer hits the Delrin and it can't wear. But I'll be putting a couple of these on eBay in the next couple of days since a couple of people asked me last time I mentioned it. So stick that to one side. And then lastly, we need to take out the trigger seal in order to remove the hammer and the cocking arm. So that's just with a 1.5mm Allen key and these three blanking screws here. And then we can push the pins out from this side using something nice and small like a cocktail stick or maybe a small Allen key. and the sear and the hammer come out there. And then finally, to remove the cocking arm, we just need to take out this grub screw here. This is one of the ones with a shaft on it. And then we can just pull the cocking arm and pellet probe assembly out. Now to do this, hopefully I'm gonna leave this assembly as one piece, as these are pins in here, and if you tap them out, there's a good likelihood that when you go to put them back, they won't be very tight so they'll keep coming loose. So I'll try my best to just keep it as one unit. But in effect, we're just gonna be cutting the cocking arm off out there and drilling and tapping, putting the screw back on, then mounting the cocking arm a little closer to the body of the rifle. So I'll get this up in the mill and I'll show you what we're gonna do. Hey then. So we're over at the mill now and off camera, I just did a little bit of marking up and worked out where I wanted to cut the lever off. So we're all centered up and ready to go and I'm just going to be drilling and tapping the hole for the cocking lever. I'm doing it around this way so I've got something to grab onto 
for doing the drilling. So we've drilled it, given it a little countersink and I'm just tapping by hand now. I like to do it this way in the mill so you get the tap nice and straight and it's just the best way I've found to do these small holes. Right, now the hole's drilled, we'll just mill off the excess so that the cocking lever fits on nicely. I'm using some paper around the cocking arm to stop it being damaged by the vice jaws. The arm's only aluminium so it'd be quite easy to get some marks in it. And I'm just taking it down nice and slowly. Then every now and again when we're getting close, I put the cocking lever on and just check, make sure we don't go too far. And there we have it. So I'll meet you over by the bench and we'll get it fitted to the rifle. Okay then guys, so here's a finished article. You can see, we've still got our hole for the screw for the cocking handle and it's significantly shorter. In the end, I ended up taking about 10 mil off it. I could have taken a little more, but the cocking handle would be awful close to the body of the rifle and I still wanted a little room to get your finger in to unhook the cocking handle. So 10 mil was just about enough. So I'll get this all built back up into a rifle I won't bother showing you putting it all back together, you've seen that plenty of times, and with the dream tax it's pretty simple. Right then, that's the rifle put back together, and as we can see there, the cocking handle is now much closer to the block. Which I think both looks better, as the cocking handle is not sticking out so far, and it's much easier to cock with one hand now. You simply pull it back nice and easily. So there we have it, a nice little upgrade. Right then guys, that's going to about do it for this one. We've successfully shortened the throw of the cocking lever and I'm quite happy with the way it turned out. Cocking handles nice and close to the block, which as I said earlier, both looks and works a little better. Now before you go, I just want to point out a couple of things on the rifle that I'm currently selling on eBay. That would be the gauge covers, both the front and the rear gauge. This is for the little chrome bezel gauges and the covers a nice machine Delrin and they fit over the gauges a nice press fit they're nice and tight they're not going to fall off but if you need to get them off you can pull them off the other thing is the trigger it's a pole trigger so this part roll rotates and it feels a little nicer in my opinion the cocking handles are also available from Bagnalls I make them and I supply Bagnall and Kirkwood with them so you can get them there and then finally, as I said before, the hammer spring shuttles with a Delrin insert in the end, I'll be putting on eBay either today or within the next couple days, so have a look out for them. So, thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next one.